Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is July the 25th today and we're looking at Psalm 65 and 66. The first one we've called a thanksgiving for nature. We have great descriptions of what God does in nature. May I suggest that both of these Psalms are rooted in David's experience but they also have a prophetic flavour and they could easily be songs that would be sung in a coming day in the Messianic Kingdom. They have that sort of a, a sense about them. Um, let's read them together. Uh, a song of David. Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Now we know that this has never really occurred ever in the history of the world. Um, God hears all prayer, but not all flesh has come to the Lord. But of course, in the Messianic Kingdom, all flesh will turn to the Lord. So that's something that is a, is a fulfilment of prophecy for the future. Iniquities prevailed against me, and as for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest, and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with, with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. There's going to come a day in the future when certain people in the world will be invited to actually come and dwell in the apartments that will be part of the temple. Now this is why in another psalm David is able to say, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The house of the Lord, of course, is always the temple. Christ calls it my father's house. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. And then he goes on, by terrible things in righteousness wilt thou answer us, O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are afar off upon the sea, which by his strength um, setteth fast the mountains, and girded with being girded with power, which stilleth the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. They also that dwell in the uttermost parts are afraid at thy tokens. Thou makest the outgoings of the morning and the evening to rejoice. Thou visitest the earth and waterest it. Thou greatly enriched it with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou preparest them corn when thou hast so provided for it. Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly, thou settlest the furrows thereof, thou makest it soft with showers, thou blessed the spring springing thereof, thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures in the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks, the valleys also are covered over with corn. They shout for joy. They also sing. Now this complete profusion, this massive abundance, is going to be characteristic of the Messianic Kingdom. Now the next psalm, Psalm 66, I've called it more thanksgiving. It's very much in the same tone, speaking also about the Messianic Kingdom. <clears throat> we'll see that as we read it together. He begins, Make a joyful noise unto God, all you lands. Sing forth the honour of his name. Make his praise glorious. Now, um, in the Messianic Kingdom, all of the lands of the world will be invited to worship the Lord. They'll be also invited to send representatives to come and meet the Lord Jesus in person 
in Zion where he sits in glory but only those that are qualified will be invited to uh, meet him there and the qualification will be righteousness those that are righteous will be uh, invited to be there verse 3 say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee and shall sing unto thee they shall sing to thy name think of that come and see the works of God he is terrible in his doings towards the children of men he turns the sea into dry land they went through a f the flood on foot uh, there did we rejoice in him he ruleth in his power forever his eyes behold the nations let not the rebellious exalt themselves think of that now <clears throat> Christ in his glory will have his eyes upon all the nations he will see them all and any nations that are rebellious they can be rebellious but they must not seek to rebel oh bless our God ye people make the voice of his praise to be heard which holdeth our soul in life and suffereth not our feet to be moved for thou O God hast proved us thou hast tried us as silver is tried it's going to come a day when Christ will prove Israel he will try them like silver in a fire and he'll bring them through affliction and he will purify them verse 10 for thou O God hast proved us thou hast tried us as silver is tried thou broughtest us into the net thou laidest affliction upon our loins thou hast caused men to ride over our heads we went through the fire and through water and thou broughtest into a wealthy place I will go unto thy house with burnt offerings I will pay thee my vows which my lips have uttered my mouth hath spoken when I was in trouble you see when Israel is in trouble they will make promises to the Lord they will make vows to the Lord which the Lord will expect them to keep and the psalmist says I will offer unto thee burnt offerings of fatlings with incense of rams I will offer bullocks with goats Selah come and hear all you that fear God I will declare what he has done for my soul I cried unto him with my mouth and he extolled me with my tongue now notice verse 18 if I regard iniquity in my heart the Lord will not hear me but verily God hath heard me he hath attended to the voice of my prayer blessed be God which hath not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me now in the old covenant in particular um, when a person uh, turned away from the Lord the Lord didn't just completely destroy them and cut them off they became consciously aware that they had forsaken the Lord their conscience smote them and their prayers were unheard their prayers were unheard how do they know if their prayers were unheard and how do they know if their sacrifices were unheard well they knew that when God did not answer from heaven with fire upon the altar um, <clears throat> but the Lord he says has heard me he has attended to the voice of my prayer now this is only something that can be said by a righteous man he says if I regard iniquity in my heart the Lord will not hear me but verily truthfully God has heard me he has attended to the voice of my prayer so what what the psalmist is saying is this he says I know that if there's iniquity in my heart God will not hear me but God has heard me and that's because there is righteousness in my heart before the Lord and he has attended to the voice of my prayer wow 
What an insight this gives us, an insight into what it's like for those who were living in those days to live before their covenant God. They had to live before God with a righteous heart. They had to make sure that, um, that there was no iniquity in their heart because only then would the Lord hear them. How different to us, we live under grace. We live in a different situation altogether. And God hears us in spite of our unworthiness. Well, God bless you. Great to speak to you. Look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.